Okay, so now I talked about the venom, how you can give accelerated forms to try to get to maintenance faster. And with error allergen and inulin therapy, there's also something called rush immunotherapy. So basically you give incremental doses of the allergen at intervals, usually between 15 to 60 minutes over a couple days until you reach a target dose, which is usually a little bit less than what we call our maintenance dose. And then the remainder of the buildup uses a traditional schedule until a maintenance dose is achieved. So you can reach a maintenance dose at about eight weeks with this form of immunotherapy, but there are some risks obviously involved with it. And more so I think with inulin than mm -hmm. venom is increased systemic reaction rate. So in a study looking at patients without any pre-medication at all, 55 to 73% of patients had a systemic with this form of immunotherapy. If you do premedicate them with antihistamines, for example, the rates are a little bit lower to 27 to 38%. So this is definitely a much higher risk uh, form of immunotherapy. And so generally for patients, we don't consider that the initial form to pursue, but it may potentially be something to consider on the patient, but it really, really needs to be evaluated carefully because as you see, these rates are quite a bit high uh, compared to just a conventional schedule. Now there's also been reported in the literature of another form of basically giving immunotherapy in an accelerated way just so that you can get to maintenance faster and that's called cluster. So this usually involves giving a couple injections, like you get two or three per visit and you come in like once or twice a week to do that. You can reach a maintenance dose within four to eight weeks. But again, with this accelerated form of immunotherapy is the systemic reaction rate. So the studies have shown without pre-medication is about 33%. And then um, with pre-medication, I'm sorry, it's 33%. Without, it's about 79%. So there's definitely much higher risk with this. And if your patient has other issues, um, cardiovascular disease, asthma, that's kind of borderline, you know, this isn't something that you would want to strongly think about in that type of patient. So what do you, you pre-medicate with? Um, you can pre-medicate with antihistamines, steroids. So those are usually the preferred methods, like you take prednisone, for example, a few days beforehand. A few days beforehand. Mm -hmm. So. Like five EID? Or uh, you can be three to five. So some of the studies have talked about giving about like 40 milligrams, for example. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of a risk benefit analysis. You know, some patients obviously they hate being on steroids. Um, you know, that can cause issues with side effects. So it's really a, a case by case basis and something that you know, if it's considered, again, should be done very carefully. So, so what are the benefits to some of these accelerated schedules? So you can reach a maintenance dose sooner. So in some ways that can have increased compliance for patients, fewer office visits. You potentially, although the studies are kind of mixed in terms of do you actually reach a clinical benefit sooner? So some studies have shown that you have, but other studies have shown that you have not. So it's almost like, is it worth all that risk if the time to seeing clinical improvement isn't different. So there's been really kind of mixed studies on that. And again, as I talked about, you know, there's significantly increased systemic reaction rates with these accelerated forms of immunotherapy. So what are contraindications? Again, asthma that's not well controlled at all. And also um, studies have shown that depending on the size of your skin test to an allergen, potentially that larger sizes of skin tests is an indication that you would have a higher systemic reaction rate. And any medical conditions where it might impair your ability to survive anaphylaxis, because as you saw, these systemic reaction rates are pretty high. So people with cardiovascular disease, certainly, you know, this is something that you probably wouldn't want to pursue in these folks. So.